All right, what's your name? Where you from? Pop here from Nashville, coming. Come below. I was in the A5, me a part here. I've been out six months, made four million. Flying in the six four window ten. And you grew up in Pompano? Born and raised on the Ace Corner. And growing up in this type of environment, do you feel like it led you down a road of, you know, committing crimes or possibly being into, you know, drug dealing or whatever? Um, being in the environment led me to be who I am right now today. You know what I'm saying? That's the lifestyle I choose. You know what I'm saying? I had to, I had to go this route, then the other route. So I really choose the route that I choose, which right. is the street route. And did you uh, go on to school and, and growing up in Pompano? You went to school in Pompano? Yeah. Um, going to school, did you were you ever like, you know, suspended from school or in and out of trouble going in and out of school? Yeah, I got a kid out of school. Out Car of Broward County schools? Yeah, Car Springs, Middle, Margate, Middle. And oh, then wow. they shipped me to Cypress Run. I actually went to Cypress Run, that's funny. Cypress Run was a pretty rough school. Um, and, you know, I know you've been in and out of trouble, you know, throughout growing up and when you landed first time in jail, what was your thoughts? Shit, I was already just in front of Ugly Corner, so you know, we grew up fighting on um, older dudes and all that shit, so I was already, it, it wasn't nothing, just a waste of time, to tell you the truth. You know, the first time I went, I stayed like 12 hours, you know what I'm saying, mom came, got, well, got sister Nelly, she picked me up, and then uh, I kept going, I had to do 21 days, you know, 12 days, then 21 days, you know, shit like that, but it was just in and out, shit like the phone. And when's the first time you realized that shit, man? Like, you, you landed behind bars and you're just like, shit, I, I might not be in and out this time. You know what I mean? I'm facing some type of time. Can you tell me about that experience? Well, it really, it really went on. It really went like that. It's just like, because really, I never got caught. So it's like I went to jail, but it was, I was never like, now you get caught, you, oh yeah, I fucked up. The car got me or something like that. It ain't happen like that. It's just like a motherfucker probably told on the other end. And then by me being on the corner, and you know, by me being on the corner, you used to hear the whole crew, oh, you get raped, or you know what I'm saying, you got to fight, da, da, da. So I didn't even have to go to prison, I just wanted to go. Meaning, like, I had the choice to do counter time or prison, I choose prison. And then my lawyer, like, what you doing? I'm like, nah, I, you know, my mind, like, I just want to go. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So I went. Kind of just rough. Um, as far as with the case when you went to prison for the first time, like, how did that play out? What you mean? Like, how did the case, how, how did they rope you up? How, did, how were you facing prison time? Oh, on that shit right there, it was like, it was numerous of things got built up as, as my priors, but that case right there, like, I was getting out of, I was at Ely, and then I, and then when I got the, um, when I got, I pulled up, I had, matter of fact, I was at Ely, uh, ROTC, and me and my cousin Jit, you know, we had the word uh, ROTC, I ain't never really want to wear that shit, so I put the shit on to get a grade, and I was missing shit, the clothes were wrinkled, so I fell. So boom, I jumped, I went through the gate, jumped in my car, came on the other corner. By that time I came on the other corner, my uncle was like, um, uh, you needed two ounces. So he was like, you gonna get it for break boy. So I was like, nah, I'm gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nah, he like, nah, I'm gonna get it for break boy. I was like, nah, I'm gonna get it. So I went to the high, cut it up, boom, boom. And then I still had my book bag and I walked back across the street. And then a white lady came, he like, he waiting on the lick, it was a white lady. So she so happened to be undercover and shit. So you know what I'm saying? So that shit right there really like something something in right there because but she never got she said she never got it from me so once again i never got caught it was just like bitch told him wow. and that was your first experience like you know with somebody having to tell on you and you know you face possibility of time from somebody telling on you yeah most of us. now growing up in this type of environment you know pumping on ugly corner uh, Golden Acres, you know, what's the wildest thing that you've seen growing up in your neighborhood or even, you know, inside Broward? Not necessarily because, you know, everybody from Broward, they chill in Lauderdale or they chill in Sunrise or somewhere else. What's the wildest thing you've encountered? Wildest? I saw a lot of shit. <laughs> wow. I mean, ain't really nothing wild. Um, it ain't too much wild shit, sad shit. But, What's uh, the saddest thing you've seen? 
Oh, uh, all right. Um, the saddest shit I saw because everything wild when you, you know, when you grew up on the corner, everything just can happen. You know what I'm saying? That's why I got the tattoo right here. Like, shit happens, like, at any given time. You know what I'm saying? But the saddest shit I ever saw in my life were two of them. One being, like, we were growing up, you know what I'm saying? And, and, a girl named Tanelia, you know what I'm saying, friend, her box, she was missing, she had got raped and killed on the back road. That was like, how old were you when you seen this? Uh, when it happened, I probably like, probably like seven or some shit like that, seven. And did you know her? Yeah, we grew up on the same block, like, you know what I'm saying? And then the other one is like, we're chilling on the corner, everybody know everybody chilling on the corner. And this thing you know, uh, K Love, you know what I'm saying? Friend, like, you got the project, you know what I'm saying? All this from the other corner, but he was over here, you know what I'm saying? And his, and his mom, and his mom, we like on the corner, and his mom had got killed. Like, the the, the uh, boyfriend killed him, you know what I'm saying? So everybody running the project. And she was just laying down, and he was on, jumping on the car, like, man, my mom, he fighting with the police. That shit was sad, you know what I'm saying? That was some sad shit, huh? And do you feel like, you know, growing up here, it, it, it made you who you are today like the struggles that you went through the trials and tribulations did it build you to who you are now yeah 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 you know i grew up like around a bunch of smokers crackheads and shit you know what i'm saying we got you know we, we got it from the dirt like you know what i'm saying ain't with no mama you come off that porch your ass go out there you grown you know what i'm saying ain't nobody looking down on you you know you the same age if you seven years old you can't be the same age as a 40 year old they gonna break your ass so there ain't no this and that, you know what I'm saying? So we understood that, my parents understood that, you know what I'm saying? And it's like I say, when I came off that porch, it was just, that's that's it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm glad I'm from the corner, like real shit. Now, I'm, a, I'm gonna dive back into jail a little bit in, in prison because a lot of people compare, you know, prison to the streets because obviously, you know, there's phones, there's dope, there's movement going on you know you're allowed to have a little bit of motion on the compound per chance you're in the county jail you're stuck in the cell all the time and you're not leaving the block um what's the you know craziest thing that you have seen in prison or you know experienced in prison that you were just like man this shit ain't for me like it's, it's like the streets but this is not the streets you know this shit ain't for me the, the only thing that shit is ain't for me for somebody cracker tell me to wake up in the morning y'all do this that's it. But other than that, I don't. How do how did that. you cope with that? Let me ask you. How did you cope with that? It's crazy. Get up. L O five. I know that bitch now. L O five two one two. You know, say that bitch so many times. Like you know, I've been out of prison about twenty eight years. But it's just like you got to get up and it's cold. Kind of turn the heat, the cold AC on. It's like that shit. But like the one is the other shit that that's got that ain't that's the only thing that ever got me. Everything was adjustable. But the one is the. The, the real shit that happened was when I was at Mark Lee, Florida, you know, there was a lot of drugs and shit on the compound cell phone. They're back in like 2000 and, no, they're back in like 99. You know what I'm saying? So boom. And motherfucker, a, 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 a M.A. had a fucking four, five pistol, a gun. On the compound. On the compound. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and he was so scared of this nigga named John John out of lot of there, the nigga ordered a, a fire from the from the officer. And they shut that bitch down. Bitch was bathing in the shower then a week or something. But they ain't end up finding a pistol and shit. Here, when the video was recorded, according to the NBC affiliate there, WDSU, a prison consultant testified that he had never seen such dysfunction in a jail. When you say they shut it down, like, what are the measures, bro? Because, like, a pistol on the compound is serious. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Closed so, custody. I mean, closed, no movement. You ain't coming out that bitch for nothing. And did they I mean, not even with medical. Yes, yeah, yeah, different prisons coming, different officers coming. Because what happened was the inspector... Uh, in the cell phone, how they found it, it was a, a right on the on a rec yard, and they found a cell phone. And when they went through the cell phone, they see this bitch order like a gun. So they went there doing it. They shut everything down. It took about like two weeks to find that bitch. They found that motherfucker. Though. That's a wild story, bro. Yeah, that was a full bro. Oh, oh, like, oh, what pistol the fuck? on the And did they bring outside like outside correctional officers? Everybody was in that motherfucker. And did they you look at like that like one shipments? Cause like now, nah, like if they find a pistol, I, I know I don't know about ninety nine, but I know I, I EOS in like two thousand nineteen. So if they found a pistol on the compound, they'll ship everybody out that motherfucker. Oh uh, no, nah, it wouldn't know. It really wasn't that because it was like an inmate to an officer. The officer brought it. Like they already done dossier. It was like you know what I'm saying. This, this inmate 
was so scared of this nigga John John of a lot of them. That nigga like, damn, I'm gonna kill this nigga. Ass. <laughs> John John slapped the shit out of niggas. I'm talking about yeah. golf ball slaps. You feel me? And when you, you know, growing up in Pompano, I know you know you know Kodak, and he's mentioned you in some of his videos. I was in the A5, me a part here. I've been out six months, made four million, flying in the six four window ten. Um, did you watch him grow up? You know, I know you're a little bit older than him, so. Really, like, I'm from the corner, in front of the project, and all this from the corner. Like, he was young. So when you hear about, okay, the young boy out there rapping. Oh, what was your rap? Did a little video, so I'm like, okay, then. But when you listen at them, you know what I'm saying, it's all, you can watch somebody, you know what I'm saying, because that ain't my age group, it ain't like, I'm for the father of the legit, da da da, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, the age, different age group, you know what I'm yeah. saying, so when we met up, as in my ears met up to his his, his level of what he was doing in, as a young boy, you like, damn, that legit ride, you know what I'm saying, so it went from that to like, this nigga, and then he believed in himself, he had a whole different vision than like a regular rapper, some people rap just to rap, like this legit walk around with his pad, his pencil, he pull up to the store in his little hoot, the little Toyota, he got a pen and a paper on the passenger seat. You know what I'm saying? So by him just believing in his dream, you know what I'm saying, being successful, that's like, and look, he one of the, one of the greatest. And honestly, he's an inspiration because a lot of people don't make it out of Pompano, you know what I mean, into the industry. Um, we've seen rappers, you know, touch the industry like Coley P. We've seen people touch the industry, but as far as mainstream selling two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars shows, we haven't seen that go. Or even a presidential party, we have not seen that coming out of Pompano. Um, as far as music, where are, do you do music, and are you taking a career in music, or as far as a label, what's going on with that? No music, no yeah, 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 yeah. I fuck with yeah on every music stage it is, you know what I'm saying? Cause you gotta understand like, uh, uh, it's like, you know, people when we're talking about Pompano, like, even when we talk about nothing in Pompano, it's, it's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach. You never heard nothing about Pompano, unless in some, I don't give a fuck, you play football, you hear a little bit. Kodak, bro, I'm like, hey, Pompano is like a fucking state. Like, you gonna say something about Pompano. You gonna represent Pompano. You gonna represent the 1800 block. You gonna represent the project. You gonna talk about he stamped that shit for like I mean he he forever he the shit that people before us like streetwise and football whatever you know what I'm saying pedestal they was on yike just stamped it you know what I'm saying he just crowned it like you know what I'm saying like that's just yeah you got to crown do you feel like you know you know involving yourself in different politics than when you were growing up now do you feel like that has led you to staying out of trouble you know you know basically living a, a productive life and not going back in and out of jail or prison no you know like i said i ain't never have to i ain't have to go to prison you know jail you go to jail doing anything you go to jail for doing something just dis, uh disorder conduct or you know anything but you know what i'm saying prison is shit, it's like you do shit, but as you doing shit, you are smart you are smart what you're doing like you think before you do it you go go to jail but you ain't gonna go to prison you know what I'm saying? It's called evidence, non-evidence, evidence, substantial evidence. So I always fall under the shit as in substantial. Like, you know what I'm saying? They got to figure that shit out. Right, 100%. And as far as Pop Henley label uh, and promotions, where are we going with this? Where are, you, where are you taking this at? Oh yeah, I'm just switching my game, man. I'm switching my game from, switching my game from selling drugs and doing wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause everything I ever got, is I got from my own community. You know what I'm saying? Every hustle I got, every money I got, everything I ever got from a hustle, you know what I'm saying, from my own community. So yeah, I'm giving back to the community. The same thing I can get, I'm gonna give it back back to them, you know what I'm saying? So my promotion is like promoting anything, you know what I'm saying? Like just, you know, uh, but you know, I'm a branch off. Majority like me, not promote, it's just promote, like right now I'm promoting the fight, you know what I'm saying? I mean, next week I'll probably promote a motherfucking bitch going to divorce. What, what fight are you promoting? Oh, uh, Megatron. Pump Megatron and against um against the community. And this is a uh, boxing event. Yeah, it's called. It's it basically based on um guns down hands up. You know what I'm saying? Showing that you know what I'm saying. At, at, at like when you go through something, you know always it really and it's all about the youth. You know what I'm saying? Like you can go through something and you don't gotta just pull that trigger. You know what I'm saying? You can go through something, you can fight, shake hand. Like back in the days, you know what I'm saying? You go out, those two niggas. I'm gonna say go jump, go get jump. I ain't gotta say okay one on one though. Go get jump. You know what I'm saying? So. It's the same shit like right now. You gotta be able to, you know, if y'all got difficulties, 
and y'all going to each other, you know, you can handle it, and then y'all shake hands, and that's it. 100%. So, so. And you mentioned that, like, you know, growing up, you you know, you you sold drugs, and you know, you took from your community, but now you feel like you have to give back to the community. Do you feel like that's your your karma scale? Because people like me, I believe that your good deeds can't outweigh your bads. Do you feel like you're trying to right your wrongs from, you know, growing up as far as giving back to the community, promoting legal fights, um, doing things for the community? Uh, no, it, it's like this, man. It's like, I never regret nothing I did, period. Like, I don't give a fuck. If I did, I did. And it ain't like karma, it ain't no karma, it's like, even though I did stuff and I did things, I still had a heart for others. You know what I'm saying? I only did things to people who did something to me. People just don't see that in. Say, so I'll let you do something to me and I'll come back and get you when I think it's necessary. When you up, I'm going to get you and then I'm going to talk about it. Like, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a taunt. Like, and then my brother be like, damn, why you let people know? I'm letting them know because he know I, you know what I'm saying? Let them know I did do it, you know what I'm saying? So it wouldn't be like, it was karma. It's just like... That's why nothing never happened to me. People are like, oh damn, nothing, was, you know, this could have did, this nigga doing that, he could have did all that. They ain't nothing gonna happen to me, you know what I'm saying? I understand. And I'm gonna break back into the music just a little bit before we end this. Who do you feel like is the best rapper in the industry and why? I'm 45 years old. I done saw a lot of shit as in music, you know what I'm saying? I done heard DMX, Jay Z, fucking. Different people. I done heard a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? But I never knew their story, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people got uh, fake shit going on. So shit don't shit. Cause we right here in Florida, we right here in Pompano on the other phone. We can't hear what really going on or how they get that. We just, his music is on a piece of paper. But Kodak, you know this nigga story. Like you know his shit. He right here with you. He rapping about shit. Like on the stress out, he just dropped. That actually happened. Like that whole video happened. I'm like, I know it happened. You know what I'm saying? I was there. So I know it happened. You know what I'm saying? So for him to put that shit in his music, it's just like, how the fuck can you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people rap and then they put pieces, but a nigga can go down the street and walk down the street and rap about everything he done saw right then and put that shit in perspective. That's the greatest rapper. Painting pictures, basically. That's the greatest rapper, bro. And where can, where can people find you at on Instagram? We're gonna make you a YouTube today. Where can people find you at on Instagram, though? If they wanna, you know, follow you, or you know, I wanna go ahead and, and, and shout out Pop Henley. Where can they find you at? Oh, Pop Henley underscore Pop underscore Henley eighteen hundred. Hundred percent. Is there anything you wanna tell the audience before we get up out of here? Oh, no, man. Y'all just stay safe, man. Stay safe out there, man. Don't forget to pray. And you know what I'm saying? Think before you act. I mean, do whatever you got to do to survive, provide for your family. You know what I'm saying? But you know, everybody's life don't have to be taken, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to take somebody's life by your greed. That's, that's something totally different. But if you got to hustle, you know, can't get mad at a robber, can't get mad at a drug dealer, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, man, y'all stop calling the police on each other, man. Because when y'all call the police, when y'all call the police, the police don't know what's going on. They go with the dispatcher. However, the situation here, they come in aggressively, things lead to another, shit happens, bro. Stop calling the police, call on your preacher, man. Uh